My name is Josiah Angier Mitchell. I was born in Freeport, Maine on June 12, 1813, the only child of Josiah and Sarah Mitchell. I never knew my mother. She died the day I was born. My father was a lawyer, highly regarded for his service in this town. I was the first in my family to follow the sea. Much has been written about my faithful voyage to San Francisco as captain of the clipper ship Hornet. The Hornet was as handsome a clipper as ever left that port. We left New York Harbor on January 15, 1866. Our journey was pleasant, and we made good time going down this coast of South America. We turned west and made as easy a passage around Cape Horn as any of us had experienced. Our trip continued north on the Pacific Ocean without incident, crossing the equator about the 1st of May. On May 3rd, disaster struck. On that day, I set the crew to varnishing. I gave the first mate a simple order. Bring the cast topside to draw the varnish. He disobeyed. He and two crewmen went below and opened the cask. A careless crewman dropped his lamp, igniting varnish that had spilled upon opening the cask. The flames spread through the hornet with great speed, and there was naught to do but abandon her. I ordered the two lifeboats and the longboat launched, and all available supplies thrown in. All of our passengers and crew got off the ship safely. We were absolutely and completely alone on the Pacific Ocean in three open boats with 10 days rations. On the 18th day, I ordered the boats untethered, reasoning that drifting separately would increase the odds of one being found. I was in the longboat drifting north, and within five days we had lost sight of the two lifeboats. We stretched our rations and occasionally caught a dolphin fish, but our situation was dire. One by one, we drifted away from islands where we hoped we might make land. Clarion Island, Clipperton Island, all out of reach. The Hawaiian Islands, nearly 3,000 miles away. On the 28th day of our journey, our rations had been reduced to a, a few crumbs of bread and a small bit of ham at midday. There was talk of mutiny and worse, which it fell upon me to prevent. We were yet 900 miles from land when the last of our food was gone. Drinking water was in short supply. Weakness, from starvation perhaps, prevented any serious attempt at violence, but I slept little and carried a hatchet and a loaded revolver with me always. The last of our drinking water gone, and with it nearly all hope, we at last spotted land. Mauna Loa loomed on the horizon. It grew larger and larger as we drifted toward it. Despite the risk of capsizing the surf, we made our way towards land. Hawaiian natives swam out and guided us safely to shore. We 15, lean and ghostly survivors, unable to stand, were carried to the home of a Mr. Jones to recuperate until we could continue on to Honolulu and then home. We had been adrift in an open boat on the Pacific Ocean for 43 days from the time the Hornet sank until we reached Hawaii. The two lifeboats and their occupants were never recovered. By the time I returned home, my beloved wife was gravely ill. Within weeks of my return, on October 31st, 1866, she was gone. You might think after what I experienced, I'd resolved to spend the rest of my days on dry land. But instead, I returned to the sea. At that time, if it were not for my daughters, I would rather be on board a good ship at sea than anywhere. I felt more at home on board than anywhere else. But as the voyages went on, I grew sick and tired of the sea. I grew sick of looking at the sky and the ocean. I grew tired of walking the plane decks. And what I needed more than anything was a good, hearty laugh. But even then, the need to maintain an income compelled me to continue at sea. I took ill on a coastal route from New York to New Orleans, and I died in New York at the age of 63 on January 23, 1876, 10 years after the wreck of the Hornet.